Imperial officer Crix Maydeen wishes to join the Rebel Alliance. But the Empire will do anything to stop him. Protect Corellia from destruction as Maydeen makes good his escape. This mission has two facets, which you're going to see as we get into it. It also has a new vehicle for us to check out, just like the last one did. So let's go ahead and jump right in. See, our only option for vehicle for this mission is the speeder, which you may have seen if you played the if you've watched The Empire Strikes Back. Not may have, you definitely have. But it's not in the snow this time. Ah, anyway, let's go ahead and uh, get our craft bio from General Riken. The snow speeder, modified with armor plating, stronger outboard laser cannons, and a harpoon tow cable for the rear gunner, is not a true flight craft, but a repulsor craft. So the flight ceiling is quite low. Hugs the ground well and is also quite maneuverable. But the addition of deflector shields was deemed costly and time consuming, so watch yourself. The controls are quite similar to the X Wing, so don't worry about additional training. Alright, so basically the speeder is um, the same. Obviously, he called it a snow speeder, it's just called a speeder. But um, it's, it's a bit stronger than the A Wing, damage wise, but not much stronger. It is just about as maneuverable and not quite as fast as the A-Wing. It packs the same amount of punch. It's only got two laser cannons. Um, and contrary to what it sh you saw there, it can't fly in space. And it also can't fly upside down. It's just a, it's just a like you said, word, an Imperial officer, just Chris a repulsor craft. It can't like fly upside down or anything like that. On the Empire's military ground operation. I'm going to contact him after my meeting with the city officials in the Capitol Tower. I like this mission. Keep your eyes open for any it is uh, oddly dark on Corellia, though. I guess it must just be an overcast day. Anyway, right now we're just flying patrol, but uh, trouble's going to strike fairly quickly. Picking up something strange on my scope. Yep, there we I go. Increase speed, full throttle. So with Direct the a with, with the bar. speeder, you actually have a unique control system where A is to speed up, and then Z and R instead of being brake slash roll, since this craft can't roll, it's uh, left and right brakes. R is right, Z is left, which means that that will help you bank your turns more sharply. For To start with, we're going to want to head off to where the orange cone is rather than just uh, follow our wingman, because there's actually, I believe, some probe droids that we need to blow up before we can actually get this mission started. Um, yeah, this mission is a lot darker than I remember. I'm having a hard time seeing anything. Okay, there we go. Imperial probe droids, get ahead. I'll defect them a <laughs> Nope. Yeah, see, I just rammed that uh, probe droid there, and I took quite a lot of damage. Um, and just like the A-Wing, IIRC, your health won't regenerate, so you're going to want to be extra, extra careful. Um, so, there you go. You can hold down both brakes to really slow down, which make, does make this craft very maneuverable. And, uh, it looks like the Capitol Tower is under attack. Of course. So you just press A to get to full throttle, like they say, and just fly um, as fast as you can, and just go. It's fairly straightforward. It's not that difficult. And oh my, time bombers! Thankfully, though, since the um, since speeder does have double laser cannons, it packs a bit more of a punch than you might think because it it fires at the same rate as like the A wing does. But since it fires two lasers at once, it actually does a bit more damage per Roll second. Those bombers are heading straight for it. There are lots of innocent people in here. Oh boy. So now we've got the Empire basically bombing the Capitol Towers for no reason other than the fact that there are some rebels inside it, and they're going to wind up killing a lot of civilians too. Well, we can't have that. Looks like we got uh, more of them over here. There's going to be quite a, there's going to be a few wing pairs. This is one of the first missions where the world kind of opens up, and there's going to be a lot of enemy, a lot more enemies than just like a, a couple of bunches or a few groups for you to take out as you go. Come on. You. There we go. Um, of course, this this speeder does not have the A wings aim help with their with its laser cannons, so you're going to have to try a little bit harder. Whoa, missed him. You're going to have to try a little bit harder to make your shots land on target. It's a bit of a sacrifice for the greater firepower, slightly greater fi laser firepower that it has. So you're going to want to pick and choose your shots a little bit more carefully, despite its rapid fire capabilities. Okay, we got one more, I think. And a couple more. But yeah, like I said, this world, this is where the world of, this is where they were really starting to open these levels up a little bit, and we'll, 
Okay, see there, the very top of the Capitol Tower is actually the tippy top of this uh, speeder's flight ceiling. You cannot fly it any higher than that. That is literally, literally the highest that I could fly it in this craft. Right here. This is the flight ceiling. That's as good as you're going to get. Okay, we, looks like we got one last time. TIE Bombers do have guns, so don't just attack them. Even, you know, if your shield's at the level that I am, don't attack them head on stupidly like I just did. Because sometimes, on, on, as the game goes on, the, the AI gets better and better at hitting you. And Rogue Squadron, this is Crix Medine. Hey, Crix. The attack came before I could reach Ryzen, and I've been down in the tech center. Can you get me out? Affirmative. Luke, I've got my hands full. Can you get them? Let's go. All right, so we got some boats out here that we can... These are completely optional to destroy, obviously, if you want to get your enemy count up. You want to go after these guys. Um, they are kind of hard to hit, um, though, because they're moving quite fast. And for some reason, hit detection is really weird on them. So um, you're going to want to destroy them fairly quickly before, obviously, you get pulled too far out of your way. Um, yeah, this... Uh, Crix Medine is actually from one of the movies. He's one of the rebel officers who helps with the briefing at uh, in Return of the Jedi. If you remember correct? If you remember that movie, he's the officer who uh, suggests you know, who who comes up with the plan to land a strike team on the moon and deactivate the shield generator to go out so they so the others can go after the Death Star. He's the guy with the beard, basically. Which he's always been a uh, favorite of my brothers and I, just because of. Uh, his cool, like, vision, how he looked visually. He didn't look like the other rebel officers. More bombers coming in. Yeah, I've got a problem here. Uh-oh. Looks like Wedge is in trouble. And what? Han, Chewie, well, what are you doing? My sentiments exactly, doing, Luke. Kid? Thought I might give you a hand. This is my hometown. All right, all. so before we head back and help Han and Chewie out with the dogfight, we actually have a couple of things here. There's some stormtroopers you can pick off here to get some enemy counts. And then you see this right over here. You want to dive down, pick that up, and swoop up again. That, my friends, is our very first upgrade of the game. Upgrades are an important part of this game in that if you do not get them, your crafts will be quite outclassed by the end of the game as the AI gets better and better. Um, upgrades. This one is Advanced Proton Torpedoes, which basically multiplies the damage that our Proton Torpedoes do by 1.5, which is quite a significant increase. Um, the Millennium Falcon is going to fly cover for us because there are more bombers headed into the Capitol Towers, but there's also one other much bigger problem. The introduction to, of the at -AT. These guys are going to be our bane through the rest of this game. The whole idea is that we have to pull an Empire Strikes Back on these guys and tangle their legs up with our tow cable. The problem is that the tow cable controls in this game are hypersensitive, and it's really hard to tell exactly where you are in relation to the to the uh, walker. So it's basically a feel thing. If you you have to play this, practice it, and do it again and again to be able to get the feel right for braking, accelerating, and turning all in conjunction to be able to to tangle the walker's legs up with uh, as much alacrity as you can because some of the later levels are going to have um, two or three or even four walkers that you have to kill them all to win the level. Since we downed that one, we could destroy him on the ground, but we're not going to. Looks like we have to go over and help Krix. Um, we can also help out Han and Chewie as well. We're going to want to do that before we go because um, as awesome as Han and Chewie are, the AI of their ship is not that great. So, um, do you want to destroy that? Yeah, there you go. Once you, hear that, once you hear that message, that means that you destroyed all of the Kai Bombers in that area, which means that uh, you can go on and help uh, Krix. Now, there are lots of stormtroopers down here inside this cluster of buildings that you can go down and kill, but because the speeder is so bad at um, with its low flight ceiling and everything like that, it's good. it has good maneuverability in a lateral direction, but not great maneuverability in a vertical direction, meaning that it's really easy to, for it to uh, get trapped in... Oh my, there's another at, -AT over there. All right. There, gotcha. Okay, there's some... Uh, Stormtroopers over there. We're not you're gonna want to vary your speed here, just like you did with the A-wing, because since the speeders 
are so much weaker than the X-Wings, those Stormtroopers have a very, very good chance of shooting you down. So you're going to want to take out... Uh, all you have to do to advance to the next cutscene is shoot, take down both Scout Walkers and the at, -AT. Um, I didn't even see that wall there. See, that's how dark this level is to me uh, on the TV that I'm playing it on. It's so dark that I can't even see where the where the where the walls end and the uh, floor begins. Oh great, the AT-AT is in range of the towers. That's not good. All right, we've got to go over there and take it down fast. Ouch! And their main laser cannons do do quite a lot of damage. You can see that that one instantly knocked me out of the green and into the yellow just from one burst. Um, it looks like regular red lasers, but they're not. They do a lot more damage than that, which means that. If, if there's one headed towards a structure that you're protecting, like in this case, the uh, tech center where Prince Medina is hiding, then, um, yeah, you're screwed. You need to take it down fast. The other the other things aren't as important as taking this down. Um, I just want to take the ATSTs down first because those are closer. Alright, so this is going to be the same as the last mission. There's going to be a shuttle coming in that's going to try to evacuate Crix, and we've got to protect it. And they're going to be sending in TIE Fighters. And unfortunately, the uh, Speeder is a really horrendous dogfighter because of its lack of altitude or out. Ugh, I can't talk. It's basically the pitch controls on the Speeder are horrendous. They seem very sensitive and maneuverable, but they actually move very slowly, which means that you can pitch up and pitch down and the Speeder won't respond, seemingly. They'll, it'll just kind of, you know, you'll, your nose will go up, but you won't go up any higher. Which is one of the reasons that I just ran into that wall, aside from the fact that I just played it so you didn't see it. Thankfully, though, they just sent—they don't send any tie interceptors at you. You wouldn't—you wouldn't last a day against tie interceptors in your speeder at this point. Um, and so we got some more upgrades. But you can just—they're uh, just sending regular tie fighters at us, so we can shoot them down fairly easily. One fun thing that you can do is now that you're taking down this AT-AT back here, you pump enough lasers into it, it blows up just like they do in the movie. Pretty cool. Um, that's not necessary for your enemy count. All you have to do is bring it down, um, and then it'll count towards your enemy score, but you can blow it up too. I don't think it hurts your accuracy score at all. It might, but not as far as I know. Um, there's a stormtrooper flying around down there. Yeah. See, there's, there's what I mean about the pitch controls. I couldn't nose down quite far enough to be able to hit that stormtrooper, and that lowered my ac that's going to lower my accuracy by a bit. Um... Anyway, well, looks like the shuttle took off and I didn't even notice it. There it goes. So yeah, um, yeah, no TIE Fighters, nothing. Easy stuff. That's the end of the, this, this part of the escorting part of the mission is not nearly as hard as the Nona part in uh, the last, group, last mission. Clear. Easy stuff. And Crix has escaped. What about the Capitol building, though? Looks like they're lifting off and... Woo! Just in time. Make it. It's all right, Luke. You held them off long enough. We evacuated everyone just in time, thanks to Captain Solo and Chewbacca. Ah, that was never my favorite building anyway. Oh, Han. That's why we love you so much, Han. Ah, silver. So yeah, I didn't get a gold on that one. Let's see how badly I did. Um, time, basically. That's what I mean, um, the time constraints in this game are fairly generous, but when it comes to taking down the AT-ATs, you're gonna want to get them down as fast as you can, because if you take your time and you, you know, wait around, then you're gonna lose the mission. We also found the Advanced Proton Torpedoes. Those upgrades will actually affect all of the craft that we have that use Proton Torpedoes, which is one, the X-Wing. But it'll also it'll increase the X-wing's damage so that the proton torpedoes do quite a bit more. You can just basically all now to kill an ATST, you just have to hit it with one proton torpedo and then one good burst from your lasers, and it's dead. So anyway, that's it for this mission, and I'm going to see you all next time for the last mission of part one of Let's Play Star Wars Rogue Squadron for the Nintendo 64. See you all later, folks. Good night.